Hey guys and hello peps, all creatures great and small. This is Ivy Tagapan here coming from group Averaging Averaging and today let me welcome you to our vlog and channel. So right now obviously I am presently vlogging but our vlog today is somehow and somewhat certifiably educational viewing to the fact that it will widen our horizon and expand our scope of knowledge regarding on how to be a polite and ethical communicator and how to properly interact verbally or whether non-verbally with people considering differences in social-cultural dimensions such as culture, gender, age, social status, and religion. So with that in mind, that's why our vlog today is entitled How to and not to interact with people in an interculturally sensitive way. So to make this vlog fantastic and successful, I have called and invited my fellow classmates and dear friends together with myself. With that being said, let's get started. So to begin with, communication plays a vital role in our everyday activities, be it to our colleagues, family members, or even to the shopkeeper that we visit. Letting people know our ideas, our opinions is a very crucial aspect of living. Lack of developing sensitivity in someone's difference can cause many diseases. That's why in account of this, we need and we should develop or, or interact with various of people in a rightful and appropriate manner. That is why we have this interculturally sensitive. Having the sensitivity enables us to learn about and understand people who are different from ourselves and allows communicators to understand and respect individuals they perceive to have different cultural affiliations to respond appropriately, effectively, and respectfully when interacting and communicating with such individuals to establish positive and constructive relationships. So we will not prolong it any longer, so to discuss how to communicate and how not to communicate in consideration of each sociocultural dimension. So let me introduce to you our first speaker today, Janwell Jaime. So Janwell, the camera is yours. So hello everyone, I am Janwell Jaime and I will be the one who will tackle one of the sociocultural dimensions, specifically the culture. As a communicator, it is our responsibility to establish appropriate behavior and an open mind. It is highly important because it allows us to effectively function in other cultures, allow us to respect and value other cultures, and can reduce cultural barriers between professionals and their patients. In music culture, of course, it will emphasize the um, habits, the foods, festivals, language, and the history of other groups of people. But it doesn't mean we cannot coexist despite of our differences. Like for example, it's put in a scenario that I once visit a mountainous province in the hometown of my mother, where there are consisting of different tribes or ethnic groups living there. And suddenly I noticed that their way of living is really different and they were clothed differently unlike the people living in the city or urban. But it doesn't give us the liberty to judge them or draw them a bad assumption regarding to their culture. We need to embrace them with our open heart. We need to show them respect in both words and actions and to communicate them with no any judgment or criticism. And by this showing sensitivity, it will increase our cultural competence of the people around us and all over the world, helping us develop a deeper understanding of other people's culture as well as our own increasing our tolerance and broadening our minds. Thank you, General Jaime, for sharing your notion and thoughts about the sociocultural dimension of culture. So moving forward, let's proceed to our next sociocultural dimension, which will be the gender, and it will be elaborated by Nelson. So Nelson Arandan, it's your time. Hi guys, I'm Nelson El Narandan. Uh, I will be talking about one of the sociocultural dimension, which is age. Uh, from this perspective, I want to share my experience during the last two years. Um, in the time 
where face-to-face -face or tra traditional classes are not prohibited. Uh, we have a uh, gay classmate and friend who is a member of LGBTQ community. We, his classmates, are extremely supportive. We embrace and demonstrate our immense love, care, and respect for him, regardless of his gender or skin color. Uh, in reality, he is the comedian or joker who gives life, power, and life to our classmates. Uh, without him, uh, there will be no life, power, or happiness. Every day, the class appears to be boring and ineffective, so every time we talk to him or approach him, we are extremely mindful and cautious. I make sure that I only use appropriate behavior and attitude when speaking with him. Uh, I am mindful of the words that I say to him, and I make sure that it does not cause a problem that called harm is self-esteem or heart is feelings so that we can avoid communication breakdown most importantly i agree that all lgbt people deserve to be loved cared for and universally accepted in our community they are humans being who may differ in gender but it does not make them any less human Thanks for sharing your idea in the dimension of cult gender Nelson. But to add more of this idea, I would like to add that we are existing in a 21st century where the prevalence of new inventions, different technologies, and different genders are out. And I think it's the time to totally accept that kind of matter without any hesitation because it's just so sad how other genders or the LGBTQIA plus community is being treated in the society today. So be sensitive when it comes to gender. Being sensitive is very simple but being appreciative of others' feeling. So in that context, gender sensitivity is about being considerate of the, of the opposite gender's feeling and with that, we should show right manner and behavior towards them. Give them the love and respect what they want and they deserve. Don't call them offensive, discriminatory language, or catcalling, but call them to their right names politely. Communicate with them with no any judgment and offensive words, or speak with them with love because what is the essence of life if there's no respect with other gender at all? So now, let's go on the third sociocultural dimension, which is the age that will be delivered by Ivy Tagapan. So Ivy, the vlog is yours. Hi everyone, this is Ivy Tagapan and I am going to talk about this type of social cultural dimension where we have to be sensitive on which is age. This is to understand and to be aware of our uniqueness and differences so that we will be more considerate. Age is the length of time a person has lived due to differences in generation and thus culture, media, political standpoints, and shifts in tradition. We can easily distinguish different generations, but first, how many generations do we have? We have the traditionalist or silent generation, baby boomers, generation X, what we call as millennials or gen Y, and us, the Gen Z, based on how we behave differently. One of the scenarios would be through generations, especially the silent generation. They were born during the post-World War II, or what we call as baby boom. They tend to be cautious, concerned, and have viewpoints. More disciplined, obedient, organized, and dependable than younger generations. Also, they still prefer and believe the traditional gender roles, where people nowadays and us, the Generation Z, are more open-minded, liberal learning, and actively engaged in advocating for the fair and equal treatment of others. The best way to communicate is through face-to-face. -face. This connects and communicates directly. 
This also involves variety on how we speak to elders, friends, or teachers through formal and informal conversation. When it comes to your friends, you might communicate an informal conversation. And if with elders or emailing your teachers, you will communicate an informal conversation. This makes sure that we always sound polite, professional, and respectful. It can also be used when you're speaking to someone you don't know very well and want to make sure you sound respectful. So we must always remember to think before we speak because it might be offensive. That's all guys and thank you. Thank you Ivy for sharing your viewpoint in the dimension of age. And let's jump to the sociocultural of social status. And it will be discussed by Kay Hapson. So Kay Hapson, it's your time to share. Hi guys, Kay Hapson here and I will be discussing the social cultural dimension of social status. But first, what is social status? So social status is a person's standing or importance in relation to other people within a society. It is shaped by one's background, education, reputation, perceived power, and position in an organization's hierarchy. With that said, we people living in a society has its own background and statuses, and the type of standing or class in the society we have might vary and modify. And people around us will interact depending on our category in the society. The effect of this can be felt everywhere. So let's get in a scenario where I am interacting with a wealthy, well-known, and professional teacher. So in this case, we need to establish respect, courtesy, and politeness, and execute the correct and precise way of interacting and manner. But it doesn't mean that we neglect or deprive showing respect those who are in lower class less fortunate and underprivileged in life. No matter what status what they in, whether wealthy or poor, we should and we must never ever fail to express the level of respect they deserved. Because I believe that regardless of your rank or class in society, you deserve to receive, receive the same or equal respect as others. So it is immensely vital to show equality to the people who circulates you. It doesn't mean that if the person I am interacting is wealthy and prosperous, then he or she will earn much more respect and attention than the impoverished people. So thank you Kay for sharing your knowledge with us in the sociocultural dimension of social status. Now let's go to the last but not certainly the least sociocultural dimension, the religion. So Juhay Mengalo will express his words in the dimension of religion. So Juhay Men, it's your time to share. Hi everyone, I'm Juhay Mengalo and I will be giving an explanation regarding to the last sociocultural dimension, which is religion. So. When we say religion, it's a particular system of faith and worship or even our beliefs due to the ex uh, extensive variation in religious and spiritual beliefs. People who identify people who identify as religious or spiritual may have a vastly different ideas and opinions about what constitutes an appropriate life practices and behaviors. Sometimes a person may feel uncomfortable com communicating with people from other religions because of assumptions about uh, other beliefs and opinions. One main communication one main communication barrier stemming from religion is individuals lack of knowledge or information about other religions and belief system. So let me take an example that Muslims or uh, Islam religion treated by many many people uh, has to be a disrespectful, abusive, and sometimes a terrorist uh, religion. It's a religion that uh, institute, institutes uh, unlawful, unlawful and violence actions. But for me, it's not. It's not. Um, 
Uh, it's a religion that it teaches unlawful and violence action, but for me, uh, this is wrong and misleading. We need to perform the right conduct and manners, even though we have a various, a various and different religion. And that doesn't mean that having dissimilar relig religion uh, with other makes you an enemy. I believe that our differences can make us unite and not to divide because I believe that all religion preach the goodness of truth and moral living, love and uh, love and compassion. We should respect all religion in the same manner as we respect our own religion since the underlying message of all religion is the same. That's all for me today. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much, Johai Mengalo, or to our last speaker. But in behalf of that, I would like to add that in regarding to the consideration of religion, that despite of the dissimilarities and differences, above all, we should approach the situation of individuals with empathy, curiosity, and respect. Ask questions. Define terms that are unfamiliar or understood differently. Use clear language with neutral terminology. Avoid jargon and avoid judgment. Taking the time and effort to listen and learn about others' spiritual beliefs can help facilitate more open and effective communication channels. So after the five dimensions are being explained, taking everything into account and in addition to heightened empathy or, or our sensitivity also lead us to place value on nurturing others, being sensitive in communication and considerate about sociocultural dimension and receptive to how the other person is engaging with you in the conversation will help you refine your message and delivery. Sensitivity in communication allows us to find correct balance for each and every one of our communication in exchanges during social interaction. Being aware of the common differences between cultures, ages, gender, religion, and so on, and it increases trust, improves work relationships, and streamlined projects. It also improves communication, which is the backbone to any successful team. And if we are just be able to be aware and considerate and also be sensitive from different forms of dimensions, it will surely help us break down cultural barriers, build cultural bridges, and learn how to love and appreciate those differences from us. We can relate better to people with cultural differences as we begin to understand ourselves better. This results in more connection and less conflict. With that said, we should practice politeness, courtesy, and kindness to everyone. Treat people equally and love. Have an open and wide mind. Don't over-criticize as well as speak discriminatory or offensive language and words. Never throw and give bad assumptions regardless to the differences. And most of all, to learn how to earn and give value and respect. Once again, this is the group Averaging Averaging, hashtag PT in Oral Communication and Context.